Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Mortal Kombat X for PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Android, and iOS, although the Android and iOS versions are considerably scaled down and really aren't the same game. What you're seeing in this video is the PC version, specifically the gold edition, so to speak, of the game called Mortal Kombat XL. This is a fighting game developed by NetherRealm Studios and published by Warner Brothers in April of 2015, and it is also the sequel to Mortal Kombat 9, which just was titled Mortal Kombat. It was the reboot of the franchise, and then they followed it up with X, which means that we're all kinds of confused as far as the numbering goes. But the developers have been on record saying Mortal Kombat X as opposed to Mortal Kombat 10, so let's go ahead and just go with that. Now this game had a bit of a rocky start because while it was very well received on the consoles, the PC version was kind of a complete disaster as far as the technical aspects went. And eventually NetherRealm said that the second combat pack as well as Mortal Kombat XL release wasn't going to come out on PC, but it just ended up being delayed rather than completely cancelled. And I actually was holding off on picking this game up until they brought it up to at least the same quality standard as they had for the console release, and they've pretty much done that by this point. So with that in mind, and the fact that generally the reception for this has been rather positive apart from the PC's technical issues, let's go ahead and start delving into this thing and finding out what exactly we're dealing with here. Well as far as presentation goes, it does run on Unreal Engine 3, and it's a noticeable upgrade over the previous Mortal Kombat game. There is a huge amount of detail packed into the environments, including various interactable objects that you'll find throughout the environment that really do help flesh things out, and on top of that, you've got better modeling and better textures than the previous game. Meaning that this looks right at home on the current gen of consoles, the Xbox One and the PS4, which is primarily what it was designed for. It also has the joy of being a 60 frame per second fighting game, which means that everything is nice and smooth. Except when it goes into the cutscenes and the x-ray moves and the fatalities which are all rendered at 30 frames per second for some utterly baffling reason. But other than that, there's really not much to complain about in terms of visuals. They even managed to make the female characters not look terrible in this particular game, which is astounding for NetherRealm. They even managed to make a dark color scheme work out rather well by actually adding additional colors than simply brown and gray, and it works out very well in the long run. The sound design, on the other hand, is a bit more of a mixed bag, mostly because the music in this game is really not particularly great. It's alright, and it fits in rather well with the Mortal Kombat style, but it's nothing that's particularly memorable, certainly not like previous Mortal Kombat games. Voice acting is generally rather solid, in fact, a lot of the characters bring some humor to the roles that actually ends up making them a lot more likable. And then to cap it all off, you've got sound effects, which are really nice, meaty, and hard-hitting. But when you're punching enemies in the face, then it really does sound like you're putting a lot of effort behind that punch. And the gore sounds during the fatalities and brutalities are suitably gruesome to boot. This means that, in general, the sound design actually manages to overcome the somewhat lackluster music by having much stronger voice acting and sound effects, and the presentation as a whole ends up being very solid for this particular title. But of course, what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this is split between the prologue section, which is about two years after the events of the previous Mortal Kombat game, and then after that, about 20 years after those events. And to make a long story short, the two years after the events of the previous Mortal Kombat game basically involves Shinnok, the disgraced Elder God, trying to invade Earthrealm, and of course you end up stopping him and sealing him away in an amulet that he was trying to use. But of course, the meat of the storyline takes place about 20 years later when a special forces team being led by Johnny Cage and composed of his daughter Cassie, as well as Jackie, who is the daughter of Jax, and Takeda, who is the son of Kenshi, going off on an entirely new adventure that has them going off to meet with the Lin Kuei and of course Sub-Zero, as well as going further than that, getting involved with the politics of Outworld, and finally getting involved with the events of the prologue, which I'm I'm not going to spoil much of here for you. Not that there's much to spoil because there's really not much to the story in this game. It primarily centers around Shinnok, and Shinnok was never a particularly compelling character to begin with. And the plot itself just isn't as strong as the plot of the previous game. I imagine that's partly because the previous game's plot was already established and all they needed to do was expand upon things, because it was just a remake of the first three games in the series. This one is entirely new, and it really doesn't do much for the series as a whole. It tries to introduce a new generation of fighters, but it feels really contrived in doing so, especially the 
the ending section of the game, where it pulls out a complete deus ex machina that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense and ends up being kind of irritating, actually. Now, that's not to say that these new fighters don't have their place in Mortal Kombat. They certainly do. It's just that they were not introduced very well. For example, Aaron Black is a pretty cool character, but he doesn't get a whole lot of screen time. And what little screen time he gets, he's not much more than a thug, which is a bit of a shame because we don't really think of gunslingers when we think of Mortal Kombat, and he's a gunslinger, which makes him pretty unique as far as the lineup goes. And while Devora is interesting simply by nature of being really weird, and Cassie is interesting because she is ridiculously sassy, most of the other new characters are really just not all that interesting. For example, the game spends quite a lot of time trying to get you to like Takeda and Kung Jin and and Jackie Briggs, and none of them are anything more than boring. That's not to say that their fighting styles are bad, it just means that they don't really have a whole lot of character behind them. Kotal Khan is kind of the same way. Almost all of his interesting nature is simply by nature of his visual design. He's made up to look like an Aztec deity, and that's definitely something that's pretty unique for Mortal Kombat, and he does have a fairly interesting playstyle, but as a character, he's just boring. This means that an element that was actually rather strong in Mortal Kombat 9 ends up being somewhat mediocre in Mortal Kombat X, and it's a real shame because the gameplay is actually where it's all at with Mortal Kombat X, and the story mode just not being very good ends up dragging the game down a fair bit. Of course, the story mode is not much more than individual battles without the finishing moves and interspersed between various cutscenes, some of which are interactable, some of which are not so you may be better served by just playing the normal fighting game mechanics anyway. Which of course brings up the question of what you get as far as the fighting mechanics of Mortal Kombat X goes. Well, it's much the same as it was in Mortal Kombat 9. You have a series of combos for every single character and you can chain those combos together with various interlinking special moves as well as just chaining the combos together by timing. Like all other Mortal Kombat games, it does have a dedicated block button and like in the previous game, you do also get a meter that gradually builds up over time by you taking damage as well as you dishing out damage. And you can either use that to enhance attacks, use it to break out of combos, or you can trigger the extremely powerful X-Ray move, which is basically like a super move or an EX move in other fighting games. The main difference there, of course, being that the X-Ray moves are much more gruesome because they give you X-Ray views of the various bones being broken and all the muscles being twisted and that sort of thing. There are also environmental interactions you can do. So, for example, if there's something laying on the ground, you can grab it and throw it at an enemy by pressing one of the buttons, or you can springboard off of various objects in the background as well. So that actually makes combat a bit more interesting than just the basic one-on-one -on -one fighting. The stage does play a factor here, and not only does it play a factor in the actual outcome of the fight, but once again, stage fatalities do return. So if you go through the required set of moves in order to trigger the stage fatality, and the stage actually does have a stage fatality, then you'll trigger a particular animation just for that stage, which is always nice. It just adds an extra bit of variety to the finishing moves that you don't get if you don't actually have stage fatalities. But even if you can't trigger the stage fatality, there are also two fatalities per character, and on top of that, they brought back brutalities for this one. But unlike in, say, Mortal Kombat 3, where Brutality was basically just a really long extended combo, in this one some of them trigger simply by taking a few actions, some of them require you to actually go into a combo in order to be able to trigger them, it just depends on the individual character. This adds even more variety to the finishing moves, and on top of those, you also have the faction kills, where you can trigger a faction intervention from whatever one you are currently assigned to, and they will kill the enemy in a spectacular fashion. So at the very least, they've added quite a bit of variety for the finishing moves, and that's kind of what you would expect for a Mortal Kombat game. But when it comes to the actual core fighting mechanics, that's where things get a bit more interesting. Because most of them still haven't changed much from the previous Mortal Kombat game. What did change quite a bit is that every single character has three different variations. This gives them access to different sets of moves that do actually affect their playstyle quite a bit, so it adds a bit more variety to the gameplay, although I would have liked it if they had taken the idea of the multiple playstyles per character and just maybe thrown in a few extra characters instead. Because as it stands, in order to actually master and main a character, you now need to learn three different playstyles unless you really want to stick with one particular playstyle and just be really good with it. 
Which is probably a better idea anyway, because learning the different playstyles and then getting them mixed up is definitely a problem. But the thing is, that's the only major addition to the core mechanics of Mortal Kombat X versus Mortal Kombat 9. Everything else is pretty much what you would expect after having played Mortal Kombat 9, so it is very familiar if you played that, and it is pretty easy to adjust to it. The only other things that they added to the game are basically multiplayer features, which are definitely very well appreciated, because now you've got a whole faction war system going on, where everyone joins a different faction and they compete against the other factions for basically just in-game currency. But it is still a pretty neat feature, and you do get some variety with the various faction kills that it brings along. And of course, like the previous Mortal Kombat game, it does have a pretty full-featured online mode, so if you want to play it online, then you're pretty much good to go on this. Although it's probably going to have some lag problems on PC, because there aren't really all that many people playing this anymore. Which, given how Warner Brothers and NetherRealm treated the PC version, doesn't really surprise me. Although it is a shame, since you can still find matches on console, but on PC it's getting harder and harder to find them. It's also a shame that they decided to go pretty heavy on the microtransactions and tried to include easy fatality tokens and such like that to try to monetize the game as much as they could. And that ends up backfiring because the fatalities are not that hard to perform anyway. So it's just yet another attempt at nickel and diming the players for stuff that they really don't want anyway. And speaking of nickel and diming, they were pushing the pre-order bonuses and the DLCs really heavily with this one as well. So you got Goro as a pre-order bonus, and you had the two combat packs, each of which introduced four characters to the game. Those were Triborg, Tanya, Tremor, Boraicho, as well as Leatherface, Jason Voorhees, The Predator, and a Xenomorph. Which brings up the point that the guest characters don't really fit in with Mortal Kombat very well. But who cares, it's freaking awesome! The problem is that you have to get two separate DLC packs or a season pass in order to get those, so really the only way I could possibly recommend picking this up is if you get the XL version which has everything included. And therein lies the problem with modern fighting games, but especially NetherRealm developed fighting games, where they just have so much DLC that the recommendation is just to wait until all of the DLC is out and then just buy the full version of it. That sort of thing has just become incredibly tiring by this point, and the fact that they keep doing it, and they're obviously doing it with Injustice 2 as well, means that it's only going to get more annoying later on down the line. So on the one hand, you have a fighting game whose mechanics are very strong because they were based on Mortal Kombat 9, and Mortal Kombat 9's fighting mechanics were great, and so they only made them slightly better in this one, so that's good. They've got a pretty decent cast of characters, although some of the new additions are a bit boring, and the emphasis on variations does cut down on what characters were available in the roster. You've got a pretty surprising amount of extras included in the crypt, where you can just wander around and unlock various things that are just behind-the-scenes items, or various fatalities or brutalities, and that makes things a bit more interesting as well. And of course, you do that through the in-game currency that you earn simply by playing the game. There's no reason to actually spend extra money to try to actually get crypt unlocks. There's nothing to worry about there. You have a story mode that takes up a pretty considerable chunk of time, but unfortunately isn't as good as it could be, and the story is a major problem with that. And then of course you've got a full suite of multiplayer options available to you, meaning that this is a full-featured fighting game that has plenty of content and is actually well worth getting. If you get the XL version. If you get any other version of the game, you're being ripped off. And frankly, that is extremely annoying, because if you don't get Mortal Kombat XL, that means you are basically being nickel and dimed for the extra DLCs. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever to get this game without all the DLC included. And that also means that anybody who went into this game from the get-go as opposed to waiting for the XL release was basically taken advantage of by a greedy marketing scheme. And it's a real shame that Mortal Kombat X got dragged into this whole thing, because on the whole, it is a very strong fighting game. Not quite as much of a breath of fresh air as the previous Mortal Kombat game was, but it is still a very solid fighting game nonetheless, and if you like fighting games, and especially if you like Mortal Kombat, you'll definitely be able to enjoy it. But the technical issues on PC were just inexcusable, and on top of that, the marketing scheme just drags it down even further, and the story mode just isn't what it could be which ultimately means that I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Like I said, it's still well worth picking up, but only get it if you're getting the XL version. Thanks for watching.